Today we're going to make concrete planters with reusable molds. I've made a lot of planters and typically I use plastic or melamine to make the mold. But this time I want to make something that was reusable. I had some leftover one and a quarter inch PVC pipe from the shipping container project. I set a stop block to about 14 inches and then cut a bunch of pieces. I got this vinyl floor mat from Home Depot. It's flexible and really strong and I just cut a strip of it with my box cutter. I screwed some 2x4s down to my work surface at right angles. This will just give me a good reference guide as I assemble the mold. I placed the first piece of pipe and then used pan head screws to attach the vinyl to the pipe. I'm using short pieces of paint stirring sticks which are just under a quarter inch thick as spacers between the pipes. The smaller the space between the pipes, the bigger the planter will be. But I'm going for a planter just about 12 inches in diameter. I checked to see how the planter was taking shape just so I could get an idea of how many more pieces I needed to screw in. To get a complete enclosure I ended up using 20 pieces of pipe. I trimmed off a bit of the vinyl and then started getting ready to pour the concrete. So I had some melamine left over from a different concrete project so I just cleaned that up and then hot glued a plastic bottle onto a mixing bucket. I then glued this whole contraption down to the melamine. I added an additional bead of hot glue around the perimeter of the mixing bucket just to make sure that the whole thing doesn't come undone and float up to the top. I then sealed over the hot glue with some silicone caulk and I just used my finger to kind of smooth this out. I then wrapped the mold around the plastic and hot glued it down to the melamine. I used some duct tape and a little bit of hot glue at the top of the mold just to hold everything in place. If you wanted a smoother finish and didn't mind taking the extra time, you could also use silicone to seal in between the pipes as well. But I don't mind a crumbly texture so I'm just going to leave it just pipe to pipe. I secured the perimeter of the mold with duct tape but if you want to make it even more reusable, a couple of bungee cords would work as well. For the second mold, I'm going to use some leftover vinyl trim boards. These boards are used for exterior trim in locations that need a lot of durability, so I thought they'd be great for reusable concrete molds. I set my Husky angle finder to 60 degrees and started to lay out a hexagonal pattern. I then used duct tape to hold a large gate hinge in position. I then cut some shims that fit into that 60 degree spacing and then repeated the process screwing the hinges to the pieces of trim board. I only had six hinges so I just used duct tape to hold the top of the mold in place. I also added in some hot glue as well. For this mold, I sealed along the edges with silicone. This way we'll be able to see the difference when you seal. For the drainage hole on this planter, I'm just gonna use a piece of PVC pipe and I just hot glued some sticks to hold that in place. For concrete, I'm using Quickrete 5000 Concrete Mix. It's a readily available mix, it's inexpensive, and I really like the nice gray color. I added in water and mixed it to the consistency of lumpy oatmeal and then started shoveling it into the molds. Now as you can see the concrete is not liquid at all. It's actually like this thick oatmeal stuff. So you really got to push it and vibrate it down into the mold trying to get out as many of the air bubbles as possible. Now I just did this by hand with a stick and I didn't do it that much so there'll still be a few bubbles but if you really want smooth concrete with no voids you can use an orbital sander without the sanding pad or even a reciprocating saw to mechanically vibrate. I was a little bit nervous about filling up the pipe mold because I wasn't sure how much water would come through the cracks, but I was pleasantly surprised with how well it held up and I only got a little bit of water dripping out the bottom. After letting the concrete cure for 48 hours, I took a putty knife and started scraping away the hot glue at the bottom. 
The plastic cap was sticking out just a little bit past the concrete, so I used my new Ryobi cordless heat gun and a box cutter to soften the plastic and trim this down flush with the surface of the concrete. I cut the duct tape and peeled the pipes right off of the concrete. I then flipped the planter over and started trying to remove the mixing bucket. This was a little bit tricky, so I just used my knife to cut it into pieces and pull it out. The heat gun came in handy again because it really softens up the plastic and the hot glue. Now I could totally just leave that lower plastic bottle in the mold, but I like to remove it. So I hit it with the heat gun, twisted it up with some needle nose pliers, and then flipped the whole thing over and cut away the rim of the bottle that was really getting stuck in the concrete. And after all that, I was able to pull out the plastic. Now I've always liked brutalist architecture where they make a concrete surface and then they use a hammer to chip away parts of it to create a little bit of contrast between the smooth and the rough. And so I just did that with a stick and a putty knife just to shave down the fins on the concrete a little bit. I cleaned up the molds with a putty knife, wire brush, and a sponge, and they were pretty much as good as new. I unscrewed one of the hinges and peeled off the hexagon mold. I used my Japanese trim saw to cut the PVC pipe flush to the concrete. And this piece of concrete was sticking a little bit to the melamine, so I moved the board to the center of the melamine and stood on either side. That bent the board a little bit to relieve the surface tension. The mixing bucket was stuck in pretty good, so again, I just used my cordless heat gun and it pulled right out. All in one piece, too. I used tin snips to cut some pieces of wire mesh that I placed at the bottom of the planters. I then put a few inches of gravel on top of the mesh before adding in the dirt. This just creates a really nice consistent way that the planters can drain. Now cactuses are a great low maintenance choice out here in the desert and I really like the idea of the way segmented cactuses would look with segmented planters. But planting cactuses is a little bit painful and I, I definitely got poked a few times. Concrete planters at designer boutiques can be quite expensive so I'm really excited that I can produce a whole bunch of these using the same molds over and over again. Check out some of our other concrete projects and be sure to follow us on Instagram. That's where we post weekly updates about what we're working on next. If you want to learn more about the concrete products that I use, go to quickcrete.com. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks. Bye.